Welcome to the Nostalgia Podcast. We are going to be talking today about Dick Powell. So many of you know him, and I think it's time to dig into his story. Where did he come from? How did he get to be the guy that we love so much in the old time radio shows? I'm Mrs. H, and I thank you for joining me as we go down the nostalgia road. So Richard Ewing Powell, I have to admit, I've not known many people named Ewing. So uh, if that's your name and I'm not quite hitting it right, let me know gently. Uh, He was born in 1904, November 14th. So he was in the 1900s, but he was just there turning the century there. He is known to be an actor, a musician. We love listening to him sing, producer, director, and a studio head. And he came to stardom as a musical comedy performer. Do you think of him that way? I tend to think of him as the hard-boiled detective. So let me know in the comments what comes to mind for you. He showed versatility and he successfully transformed into the hard-boiled leading man, starring in projects that were much more dramatic according to the encyclopedia. He was the first actor to portray who? The private detective, Philip Marlowe. And we on our channel love to do Philip Marlowe shows. You guys love it and you've let us know that. Early life. Now, Powell was born, he was the middle of three sons. He had a mama named Sally Rowena and they were in Arkansas. I, I, you know, I wouldn't have thought that. I kind of think of like New York City. Maybe it's because I'm from New York, so I think everybody must have been from New York, but he was from Arkansas. And his brothers were Luther, and that was the eldest, and Howard was the youngest. The family moved the boys to Little Rock in 1914, and guess where Powell learned all his style and his singing? It was at church, in church choirs. You see that a lot. You see a lot of people grow up in the church choirs, and that is where they really have a chance to hone their skills and have an opportunity to be in front of people. Any of you uh, grow, grew up singing in church choirs, let me know in the comments. Also with local orchestras, and he started his own band. I wouldn't mind going to see, hey, it's the Dick Powell Band. <laughs> I mean, I think you'd be fun. Now, ba- Powell attended the former Little Rock College before he started his entertainment career as a singer, you kind of wonder like, what was it that people thought that they would be? Would like, you think of these people as so extroverted, but like they would be an engineer or they would go to school for something that had nothing to do with entertainment. And you're thinking, how did you not know you were meant for the stage? Now, around this time, he married Mildred Mond, a model, but she found being married to an entertainer not to her liking. Now, I think it's interesting here because she was a model, right? So you kind of get a lot of attention if you're a model. So you would think that she would relate to that, but no, as an entertainer, she didn't She didn't want to be married to somebody who was also in a field like that. What about you? Would you think, of course you love your significant other if you're married, but if you weren't, would you want to be married to an entertainer? Would that be something that you would like? Would you like all the, star all the stardom that comes along with it and things like that or would you feel like this is just too much you wouldn't like your husband or your wife get having to give autographs to all the people of the opposite uh sex and things like that i don't think i would like it i don't know mr h is getting kind of popular here i don't know about all this Moving on, after a final trip to Cuba together, Mildred moved to Hemp Hill, Texas, and the couple um, divorced in 1932. Later, Powell joined the Charlie Davis Orchestra in Indianapolis, and he recorded a number of records with Davis and on his own for the Vocalion label in the late 1920s. I wonder if we could get those. I, I, I don't know. YouTube has everything. I wonder if we could get those songs. Stardom. Now, Powell, according to Encyclopedia, moved to Pittsburgh, where he found great local success as a master of ceremonies at the Enright Theater and the Stanley Theater. I have to admit, I don't really know what a master of ceremonies is. Can you guys let me know in the comments? When I was young, my mom, my mom is an art teacher and she loves 
everything with museums. And she tried to make me superly culturally savvy. And she would take me to all the museums. But the only museum that I ever liked <laughs> was the Museum of Television. And we went into a room where they were playing. I think it was All in the Family and Lucille Ball. And I just, I fell in love with it. And of course you see that even today. So let me know what a master of ceremonies is. Is that like a DJ? Okay, um, Warner Brothers. In April, 1930, Warner Brothers brought Brunswick Records, which at the time owned Vocalion. Now Warner Brothers was sufficiently impressed by Powell's singing and stage presence to offer him a film contract in 1932. He made his film debut as a singing bad band leader in a blessed event. I could see how that would be a perfect fit for him. He was borrowed by Fox Film to support Will Rogers in Too Busy to Work in 1932. He was a boyish crooner, according to Encyclopedia, and the sort of role in which he specialized. So you see that he got to be known as the crooner. And I was asking Mr. H, you know, explain to me what a crooner is. So this is the charming singer. And, you know, I just don't, I, you know, I see him more in the tough guy role. So let's jump ahead about how he transitioned. Also musicals, like the way he does it, I don't really feel like I'm watching or listening to a musical. Musicals kind of went out of fashion over time. And so you don't want to be stuck in that musical role where you're going to land up by being old hat. So in 1944, Powell felt like he was too old to play romantic leading men anymore. I don't know. This is people are so ageist. So he lobbied to play the lead in double indemnity he lost out to fred mcmurray oh my gosh i would totally choose powell over fred mcmurray even though fred mcmurray i think is more famous i would totally choose powell what about you another hollywood nice guy mcmurray's success however fueled powell's resolve to pursue projects with greater range now powell's career changed dramatically when he was cast in a the first of a series of film noirs as private detective Philip Marlowe in Murder My Sweet in 1944, directed by Edward D Dimitrik at RKO. And the film was a big hit and Powell had successfully reinvented himself as a dramatic actor. I just think this is amazing how he did that. How, how many other people do you know that could totally transform themselves being known like Groucho Marx? Okay. You know him as a comedian. Would you think of him as a, a leading man or this hard boiled detective? I mean, he makes it look easy, but that would have been really hard to do. Now, later on, he turned into a director and he made his feature debut in split second in 1953 with RKO again. And now in television in the 50s, Powell was one of the founders of four star television. I just think that's a great show, along with Charles Boyer, David Niven and Ida Lupino. He appeared in and supervised a lot of shows for them. And Powell played the role of Willie Dante in four star playhouse. So here he is. He was ahead of his time. Entrepreneurial mind. He said tv is taking off and i want to be in it and he was guest starring in all these programs and uh he even sang on camera so he was able to tie everything together and it just seemed so seamless i hope you enjoyed learning how he had his big break how it was all started and how he ended up by being so successful by thinking outside the box. That's a lesson for us. Maybe you've always done one thing. Maybe you've been in a certain kind of career or people know you as a certain kind of identity. And there's something a little itching inside of you to want to explore something totally different outside of the box. What is it? Let me know your thoughts in the comments and maybe this could be the seed for something great. Dick Powell style. Okay, this is Hearth and Home Nostalgia. We're so glad you tuned in.